What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the Gramercy Theater for the first metal show of the year here. And today we return with Richie of Insight. Thank you for your time. What's up, my brother? All is well. All is well. Cold as fuck. You know, but rocking. Yeah. But I got to say, I prefer this because when I spoke to you on your birthday over the summer, it, I, I, I got sweaty from walking like 10 feet. Yeah, dude, that was, uh, I, I prefer a cold tour over hot for sure. We were getting fucking eaten alive by like mosquitoes and probably ticks and every other damn thing last tour. So this is much more enjoyable. Yeah, and I was almost certain after uh, your birthday show uh, that you were not making it for the rest of the tour. Oh, dude, that, that we, uh, you know, we had like three shows after that. So we, we managed to survive and now we're back, man. It's going to be cool. Yeah, it's great to have you here, man. Because the last time we spoke, Ruthless Ways, uh, the first single off the new record, was fresh out. I think it was it came out like that day. Yeah. And then now you have Built to Destroy out, this absolutely monster of a record. Let's just give a rundown on how the making of the record was and the reception thus far. Yeah, man. It was, uh, you know, that record that I think we kind of set out from day one to kind of make where it had everything we wanted you know like as, at least i did you know i've always missed that soloing and the guitar stuff and um the time we had to record it you know those are all things that we had never gotten throughout the process of making all these albums so uh you know drew stepped up you know he wanted to f you know finally take the helm on writing and you know he wrote most of oppression too with the uh, you know kevin our old guy and uh it was time you know we'd been touring a lot we've been together a long time so uh, you know, we let him just kind of lay down all the demo rough music and, you know, guitar and came in with killer stuff. And I, I think it made it easier on some aspects, you know, to, to have things ahead, you know, and not just, uh, pieces of stuff, you know, it was like complete and, uh, time, man, Steve Evans kicked our fucking asses. We had, you know, like 20 days just on guitars. So, uh, the whole thing was just bigger, better, more like we had always wanted. Awesome. Awesome. I've noticed that, you know, when I reviewed this record, I called it an 11-song killing spree. I thought it was consistently heavy throughout. It Was this kind of like a preconceived idea to make a consistently heavy record, or did it kind of just uh, turn out that way? You know, I think with us, that's kind of what you get. You know, we're, we're not the ball ballad, you know, type of sing-along-y, fucking happy, you know, go-lucky stuff. So for us, it's just about you know, fine tuning those things. We know it's going to be heavy and we know it's going to kick ass on this level. So now let's, uh, let's do different stuff. Let's, let's, you know, like the soloing, I mean, eight songs out of the 11 have a full blown solo on them, which, you know, most of our albums have like one or two. So, uh, the, the drums, the bass is very present on this album more than anything I think in the past. And, uh, you know, those little things make a huge difference and add just, you know, that next step of growth for us as well as keeping it, you know, just straight heavy. Yeah, which is awesome. When being, I, I was like asking about uh, this when it comes to a record like that because being that the record is consistently heavy, did maybe like the making of each song get a little bit easier because you kind of like developed a formula as you went along? I mean, it's never easy, man. Writing songs is fucking hard. You know, and Steve Evans is a, a fun person to do all that kind of pre production with because, you know, he doesn't force things. It's very organic what we try and. Uh, you know, it just kind of comes easy. We know we want to just play stuff that smashes pits, but I think, you know, with the last two albums, you've had songs like, um, you know, Stagnant, which it's heavy, but it has a different kind of heavy. It's not, you know, a thousand miles an hour. And I think that's what you find with our heavy. It's not a trillion miles an hour or it's not just technical as hell. It's just solid and I think getting perfected in an essence of where we want to be as far as, you know, what we do. So this album produced that, man. It's killer. And Backbone, you know, and Resistance. So let's have that groovy set, you know, heavy, as opposed to that fast, crazy, kill yourself shit. Yeah. Well, I feel like you guys covered all aspects of heavy. You have some songs that are very groove-oriented, like for Pantera lovers. Then you have straight-up, like, Tampa, Florida, death metal sound. And yeah. so I feel like it, whether you listen to death metal or black metal or deathcore, I feel like you guys kind of covered every aspect. Yeah, big big with this album, uh, you know, I think over the last couple of years, the bands we toured with, you know, they've been more obscure and, you know, not the things you would think we would tour with, but, man, they've been killer runs, like uh, Gorgoroth, which, you know, said black metal, and that I'm sure influenced Drew on riffs, and uh, then you had Six Feet Under that we play with, that's, you know, that death metal feel, so we definitely influenced 
things as well as picked up things as we went along playing with these bands. And you know, I think that's what's cool about music. You know, it's just about writing uh, what you want. Definitely. And what I like is I could tell that you took influence, but sometimes inspiration could be such an enemy. Like, yeah. what's the difference between inspiration and just ripping something off? And you guys definitely didn't do that with this record, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've never really been like a music writer per se, but I can always tell when things are original or just feel normal, you know? And obviously with music, there's so much you can do with it to make it different, you know? As long as you're not making, you know, an Ed Sheehan type of fuck up you know like covering what he did you know so as long as you you just know what you're doing is what comes from your heart you know it, it's easier to do definitely now in this record uh, we also talked about before set of rolling you had two noticeable guests you featured chris barnes from six feet under ex cannibal corpse and you had kirk from crowbar did having these guys when they joined when they were collaborating with you did you want them to bring particularly what they're known for in the record or did they kind of have to maybe like adjust a little bit to the inside sound in order to bring their mix to the record man it was weird how that worked out because you know we kind of have always sat down picked dudes that we've toured with that became friends and you know really mentors to us you know and they were two guys that did that so um with the songs it was like man human cancer just it totally when we heard it out of everything else just felt like something crowbar would have put it out you know so it was just a matter of making them more comfortable and not putting either or, you know, changing so much, you know, just having it be in their feel and having it still be an inside style, which was cool. You know, I think like Poison by Power, it's the, the verse riffs and things going on throughout that I think are just so cool and that it gives the album so much flavor, like you said, to feel that death metal kind of sense for a minute there, you know, and jump back into you know just the heavy metal shit that we like to do so it's uh it was cool having them man yeah. beautiful songs yeah those that song you did with uh chris barnes what i've noticed is is like because you know a lot of people would think like let's say you know you had george from uh cannibal corpse on one song and then you had dave vincent from morbid angel collaborate together some people might not be able to know the difference or to them death metal death metal for you i was able to tell it was you and then when it went into chris barnes which i thought was very impressive yeah, I, man, I loved how his voice sounded on this particular album. You know, I've always loved his voice, but on this one we got something special. He went to a really, you know, old school historic studio out in Seattle to do this album, you know, part for us. And, you know, it just might have been the vibe and, you know, me and him really clicked on a lot of things. So I think it was cool and he wanted to kick ass and he fucking did. It rules. Definitely. Definitely. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time as always, man. Always great to see you. Bro, you absolutely rule. I mean, this guy keeps it heavy, supports the metal. Mad respect. I try, man. Thank you. Um, just, you know, it's a brand new record cycle, Built to Destroy. I think it's actually, it came out January 11th, right? So it's it's a month old today. January 25th. It's only like two weeks old. Man. Oh, sorry. That was my bad. Oh, no, don't worry, man. There's so much going on right now. It's a lot to digest and i was trying to calculate in my head how long it's fucking been out the time just it flies man but it, it's killing it it's selling more than we ever have people are coming to the merch booth relentlessly buying it and it's just it's like nothing i've ever seen man the energy at these shows is it, it, it's something just it, it just went to the next level man it's fun to see people coming out and just kicking ass and partying and enjoying themselves yeah can we just be expecting to see Inside on the Road a little bit more uh, throughout? You know, it's a brand new record cycle, so I'd imagine we'll be sweet seeing quite a bit of you. Yeah, we've kind of gotten to the point where there isn't really official time off anymore. It's more just like the break between the next tour. It's, uh, it's pretty nuts, man, but we love it. And, you know, we'll be in Europe next with Septic Flesh and Crisian and some oh, other cool sweet. shit going on and Bloodstock uh, later this year, which uh, we're coming to just kill everybody. And it's going to be fun, man. Partying. Awesome. Well, Richie, always good to see you. Ah, I love it. And just for old time's sake, I'm going to say happy birthday like last yes, time. Yes. Every day's your birthday. Uh, Jack Daniels shots, lots of joints tonight. Yeah. If you're catching him on this tour with Soulfly, please buy this guy a couple of shots because not only is he performing tonight, he's also working merch. He's driving. He's doing it all. This is the MVP of the tour tonight. Yeah, dude, the whole band, we're all, you know, the crew guys, the everything, man. It's fun to have a band that's this motivated and dedicated and still rock. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. 
But everybody, Richie of Insight, built to destroy. For God's sake, pick up the record if you haven't already. Catch him on the remaining tour dates with Soulfly and Cataclysm. Catch him in Europe with Septic Flesh and Crisian. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York, everybody. Keep it heavy, New York. <laughs>